Welcome to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower, brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now, here's your host, David Brower. Thanks, Alan. This is David Brower with your 20-minute podcast. Our special guest today from Phoenix, Arizona is Elijah Morton. He's a musician, producer, and visionary. He's been playing the piano since 1995, a talent that was granted at seven years old. And uh, you've used this music forever, not only for, to entertain others, I assume, but also as life went on, you found ways to find music to help people heal. Is that right? That's absolutely right. And also myself, it started with healing myself um, Childhood was a little rocky. There was some phenomenal times, and then there were some not so phenomenal times. And I would always turn to music to, uh, to to escape those not so phenomenal times, even if it was just for the duration of like a three or four minute song. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've used that ability to help to heal people as well. And you live you lived in Detroit for a long time, and so just appearances from news snippets. Uh, it makes you think that those phenomenal times were could be pretty tragic from time to time. It's tragic, actually, is a great is a great word to use. Uh, um, it's not it's not as bad, but the stories have truth to what you hear. Like in the news, some of those stories do have truth to them. Um, and there were, I grew up around people who had just a different energy. From myself, and that's not, not not saying anything bad about them. Right, right. We're it's all different. Yeah. Even absolutely, it's, it's just even younger, or even starting out as a as or in my younger years, I realized that their path was the path that I wanted to take. That I did want to impact people, and going down their path wasn't the best one for my particular journey. So, um, growing up, that caused a bit of a friction mentally. I bet. I bet people, uh, people, people having expectations of you that were 180 degrees apart from where you felt you needed to go. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So you you discovered music, or music discovered you when you were when you were at the age of seven. How did how did that come about? You know, I think me, me and music discovered each other. <laughs> it was actually after a near death experience. Me and my older brother. Um, we were swimming in a neighbor's pool. And this was when I was about seven years old. We were swimming in a neighbor's pool. And at the time, I couldn't swim. He couldn't swim. We were using this huge beach ball as a volleyball playing back and forth. He hit the beach ball into the deep end of the pool. And me being the stubborn Aquarius that I am, although <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to go <laughs> to the deep end of the pool, right. I go anyway. And... He's telling me, "Don't go over there, or you're gonna you're gonna drown." Yeah. I go to tell him. I don't even know if I was able to say the words, but my intention was to tell him, "I know what I'm doing." And before I can even do that, I fall in, and I just remember. I actually don't remember falling in. I'm just like panicking, and I'm kicking, I'm swelling my arms, heart racing. The next thing I remember is pulling him under to try to save myself. Sure. And then literally the next thing I remember after that is panicking, throwing my head out of the water and two friends were with us at the time. And they're screaming, you're safe, you, or, or they're screaming, um, you're drowning your brother, you're drowning your brother. And I look down and I'm holding him under in a panic trying to save myself and not wanting to drown my brother, of course. Of course. And I let go and I fall in. And I'm exhausted from this fight. You know, this is happening all so quickly. And I come to the understanding that I am about to die. Wow. And me dying, that thought wasn't the scary part because I was okay with it. It was the fact that my mother was about to lose both of her children, her only two children, when she was just innocently taking a rest on a summer day. Gotcha. You know, she was going to wake up and she was going to take or she was going to realize that she lost both of her kids. That was the worst part about it. And I did not want that for her. And as soon as I felt that, you know, as soon as I pretty much said with my soul, I don't want that for her. Literally, instantly, I'm leaning over the shallow end of the pool. 
taking a breath. And wow. everything's calmed down, everything's relaxed, and everything is happening so quick. It's like a montage in a movie. Yeah, sure. And the, the two friends, they're yelling, you, saved, you, you just saved your brother's life. You just saved your brother's life. I turn around, and I realize they're looking at me and telling me that. And I'm like, I didn't save my brother's life. I, don't, I almost died. Did you not see what? And they're like, no, you just saved your brother's life. You grabbed him, and you swam with one arm, and you swam both of you guys to safety, and you saved your brother's life. My brother's looking at me, dumbfounded, like, yeah, you just, that just happened. Wow. And to this day, to this day, he says the same thing. Like, yeah, he says it like he remembers it like yesterday. Like, yeah, that's exactly what happened. And I actually got a reading years and years later. And she told me that out of nowhere, she just told me like something happened to you when you were seven. You almost lost your life. And it was to shake you up to the greater aspect of yourself so you could know who you are. It was to kind of shake you to get your attention. And that's exactly what it did. I say all of that to say after that experience, Experience. Maybe about a year or two later, I just had this insatiable hunger to learn the piano. Yeah, and I would beg my mother to give me this cheap little eighty dollar Casio keyboard, <laughs> <laughs> which she did. And she also bought classical CDs just out of nowhere. And after that, I would just sit and listen to like Beethoven, Chopin, Mozart, and I would just start playing it. Here. Oh my gosh! And this was something that was also unlocked during that near death, that very traumatic near death experience. And, yeah. You know, that's what the medium told me as well. It was, it was very interesting to hear it come from someone that had no idea that it even happened. Absolutely right. I, I went to one of those many years ago and had a similar experience uh, in the conversation. So I get what you're saying. The thing that I'm, I'm struggling with is I can't get rid of the goosebumps. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Too. Oh I, feel, my, I, I feel them too. Every oh time I feel my them Lord, story. brother! Yeah, wow. So, so snippets from a movie, quick, 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 quick. I get that, and and your in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, everything's going to the tank. Your your mom's gonna wake up from a beautiful rest and know her kids are gone, and then all of a sudden the world changes. You saved your brother's life. You're okay. And did your mom realize what happened? Yeah, I went in, and I, after everything happened, I went straight to her. Like, yeah. I was still dripping wet, walked in the house. My grandmother was mad that I was getting water on the carpet. <laughs> but I walked, <laughs> walked right to my mother, and I told her she was still asleep. That I almost was drowned in the course, you know, being a mother and hearing that and sure. seeing the, the trauma on her child's face. You know, she was first grateful that we didn't die. Right. And then um, she went down and talked to the guy, and, you know, told me to keep a better eye on who's in your backyard. Well, there's no such thing as no such thing as a coincidence, man. I mean, uh, like the medium told you, this all happened for a reason, and over time you started to figure it out, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and even after that, I I had a, a, an insatiable hunger for music, and it was also just for spiritual knowledge. I was yeah. just stare out at the, at the moon and the stars and I became, became obsessed with like the universe and the planets and how it all operated and worked together. My God, I'm all right. We've gotten from goosebumps to speechless. I'm just, I'm fascinated by all of this. <laughs> so you were seven. May I ask how old you are now? I'm 32. Okay. So in the last 25 years, uh, the world has done some amazing things in your life. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it has. It, um, uh, it, it, it's done amazing things, and it was also, at times, it appeared to be a curse. Sure. And I say appear because it was just my perception of it. Um, and spiritual growth isn't for the timid, I believe. Agreed. There are things, there are, right, there are things that come at you that really, you know, present you in a very naked form, so to speak. It yeah. presents who you really are, and that can be uncomfortable with some people. Well, very uncomfortable. I mean, and if you don't have a, a strong enough faith at some level to be able to trust what's going on in your life, good, bad, or indifferent, man, you have you have many opportunities for many train wrecks along the way. Oh yeah, that's that's actually what helped me through everything was faith, was knowing that this is all for a reason. 
Yeah. And even though I'm going through pain right now, one is temporary and two, it'll make sense. Sure. You know, it'll make sense to them. Sure. And then when did you discover that you could turn these gifts around to help others? Oh, uh, this was fairly recently. I would okay. say about 2011. Okay. Around 2011. Because I, that same medium, she actually told me that I'm also intuitive. So I started using that aspect as well. She told you you were what? She also told me that I was intuitive as well. Oh, okay. And I started using that aspect as well. Nice. Nice. So how did your first experience um, of any consequence, I guess, uh, in helping someone change their lives? How did that come about? Well, that actually started my very first situation where I knew that I could interpret information was actually when my father died. He died at 28 years old. This was in 96. And the moment it happened, the moment he was getting murdered, I knew. I knew exactly what was happening to who. And I kind of just went quiet. I was watching TV at the time. I just went quiet and sat down. Yeah. And, you know, the rest of that day was kind of quiet. But my mother woke me up at about 3 in the morning. She didn't really know how to tell me. But she kind of had to gather the words. Oh, I bet. She woke yeah. me up. Yeah, she woke me up at 3 in the morning and told me. And my response was, oh. And originally she thought that I was like, oh, okay, whatever. But it was more so like, oh, I know. Wow. Um, so my first experience with helping someone actually was a friend. Her sister was heavily addicted to drugs. And this is when I really realized that I could help. Okay. Her sister was like severely addicted to heroin. She caused me in a panic you know, to do something because you know that I can do this type of work. Sure. And I started meditating. I started like visualizing what her addiction looked like if it were, you know, transduced into another form, if it were put into pictures, okay. symbolic pictures. Sure. And through those symbolic pictures, I was able to make her addiction, the energy behind her addiction stand down. And literally probably about two or three days after that, she randomly called her sister and said, you know what, I'm going to go to rehab. Just literally out of nowhere, I'm going to go to rehab. And she went to rehab, hasn't touched any kind of drugs since. She actually had a son since then, a beautiful son, and she's wow. very much so in love with him and found a new meaning for life. Wow. If that's not the payoff, I don't know what is, man. You, I mean, gee whiz, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's um, absolutely the way people... Thank you. It's the, yeah. the, just the energy behind them saying thank exactly. you. Like, I don't know how to help. I don't know how to pay you. Yeah. I don't you understand it. I can't comprehend it. I don't get it. I don't deserve it. But yet here it is. Thank you just doesn't quite cut it, but thank you. Absolutely. That's the, the best feeling in the world. I love it. I love it. So since then, it's gone on and on, and, and you've changed uh, more and more folks, and you've developed uh, the Freedom Essence uh, website. Tell us a little bit about that. I'm actually in pre-launch with that. What I'm doing is I'm developing a product called Pure Rejuvenation. That's the okay. working title, so that title might change. Okay. And what that does is it speaks about dissolving the ego and spiritual protection. And when I say spiritual protection, I'm not talking about like throwing fireballs at people or anything like that. <laughs> I'm talking about just, you know, centering your energy, protecting your energy so that the peripheral events and circumstances that are unfavorable, they just bounce off. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so you're in the process of developing this. How close are you? Have you, have, have you tested it out? What's the, how does this play in your mind? That's actually the next step testing. I'm looking for a test group, looking for 100 people. And I wanted to leave with integrity. I didn't want to just out the gate start charging people since this is, you know, a new product that I'm developing. You bet. I wanted to get 100 people as a test in the test group completely free. So no credit cards, no anything like that. Good. I wanted to get results first and then put a price tag on it. Good yeah, for so you. I kind of want to leave with integrity. Well, you start it with integrity, you care it with integrity, and, and obviously your life has been filled with integrity, uh, which has brought you to this point. So your journey um, at 32 years of age is uh, 
it's been quite a road, and, and you've got a long one left ahead of you, man, to help help thousands of people, I would think. Oh, yeah. I, I say it just, I, I personally still was in my life literally from, I would say about two months ago, just started. You know, because there were so many rocky and turbulent times in the past, and now I'm at the space to where if it is presented to me, I know how to maneuver around it. And before, I couldn't do that. Everything triggered me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you had to, I mean, I can't even imagine the journey, really. I mean, all these years that you've spent with this and and um, um, and your faith obviously has helped you through a lot of trials, tribulations, hills, valleys, bumps, whatever you want to call it. But but as you as you've grown through this and you've found more mm, enlightenment, maybe more intuitive situations that you're pay, able to pay attention to more. Uh, feeling more in control of your ability to help others before you even start this process. I mean, that's, I can't imagine how invigorating that is. Oh, yeah, that that's really it. And the crazy, the way that I <laughs> compared this was uh, Michael Jackson was a huge part in my healing, his okay. music. And I remember the first time I even heard of who Michael Jackson was, I was a Disney fan. Yeah. And when he passed away, I told my mother, if I can impact someone, at least just one person, the way he impacted me, then my job is done. Anything <clears throat> anything over that is just icing on the cake. It's just Perfect. Blessing. Yeah. Perfect. Well, and when you do that, even if you get a, a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percentage of what he was able to do, and you touch one person, and then that person passes the word and then that person passes the word and, and I mean referrals and and uh, the good feeling around everybody that you touch is just going to be unbelievable I mean it just it feels so right you know I don't know you from Adam but I just know you're on an incredible journey and I'm so excited for you I can't I can't even tell you thank you I do appreciate that yeah and that's what it's about too, like just this avalanche or domino effect of spreading light yeah. You know, and I think that's how the world will be able to change. It starts with just this small light getting bigger Absolutely. You know, around the whole yeah. world. Absolutely. Well, when does your when does your group of, of one hundred uh, begin? Do you have a do you have that in the works yet? I don't have it or I have it in the works. I have the website and everything um up. But I'm actually gonna start promoting it maybe this weekend. So uh it may already be filled by the time the podcast is out. I'm not sure when it's gonna come out. Okay. But uh it may or may not be filled by then. <clears throat> there may be some slots still open, so we just we just have to see when we get there. Okay. Well, when you get it going, and if there's some slots open, uh, let me know, and I'll just put a short tag at the end of the podcast to encourage people to uh, to reach out to you and um, and see what see what kind of magic happens, man. Absolutely, do appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Hey, our guest has been Elijah Morton. Uh, We could go on for a long time on this conversation. It's been so cool. And uh, he's producing music for meditation that bathes the soul. He's helping to change lives. He certainly uh, has used his his faith and intuitive uh, gifts to change his own as well as others. And so uh, a work in progress uh, would be a huge understatement, man. Congratulations to you and uh, continued success. I'm looking forward to hearing all about you on the uh, Detroit Free Press. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> all right. Your 20-minute podcast with David Brower has been brought to you by Audible. You can listen to any of David's podcasts anywhere podcasts can be found, including iHeartRadio, the Spotify mobile app, and at davidbrowervo.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Until next time, thanks for listening.